Welcome back. The New York Times has dubbed her Osama bin Laden's worst nightmare. Ershad Manji is a Canadian writer, a dedicated Muslim, who strongly and articulately criticized the direction of her faith in her best-selling book, The Trouble with Islam Today. Now she's at it again with a new film, Faith Without Fear which has just gone on world release, in which she interviews Salman Rushdie. I'm delighted to welcome her now. She, her name is Ershad Manji. Ershad, welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, what would you say that the theme of a lot of what you're, what you're doing and in the new film yeah. um, is it's the direction of your faith, not your faith that you're attacking? Uh, correct. Uh, the practices, not the faith itself. And here's what I'm saying uh, to my fellow Muslims. Islam began as a religion of justice, and it has become corrupted into an ideology of fear. And it is we Muslims who have done most of the corrupting, and therefore only we Muslims who can lead the effort to fix it. And to those Muslims who argue that this message is un-Islamic, even anti-Islamic, I humbly say to them, again as a faithful Muslim, that the Qur'an, Islam's own scripture, contains a beautiful passage about taking responsibility. It states, God does not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. We Muslims have to change what is in ourselves, even as we point fingers at the rest of the world. And, and to those people, to those uh, uh, sincere Muslims who can't take the leap of, that leap of faith with you, of, of criticizing the things that the faith are doing but being loyal to, to the faith, you would say to them, the priority is to get it right. Well, and what does it even mean to get it right, Sir David? I mean, when we look at the Qur'an, of course it contains many passages, many verses about all sorts of issues. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, you know, every chapter except one starts by deeming Allah, God, as the most just, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Therefore, mercy and compassion ought to be the order of the day for us as well. But in addition to that, and most Muslims don't know this, the Qur'an contains three times as many verses calling on us to think, reflect, and analyze than verses that tell us what is absolutely right or wrong. So the, 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 the emphasis on thinking and on interpreting and reinterpreting for a brand new era is key. It trumps, you know, the small number of verses, relatively speaking, uh, that suggest uh, that we blindly follow. We have to be leaders within our faith, not blind followers. And is there a difference between being uh, maligned and being persecuted? You mean me being maligned, or rather me maligning the religion? Islam, is it so? Well, you know, again, a lot of Muslims do feel humiliated and offended by much of what, you know, is said about Islam. But one of the big points I make in the documentary, and I illustrate it, I don't just say it, is that uh, to be offended or to feel offended is not the same as being discriminated against. That is to say that, you know, in a diverse society, it is not just race and religion that deserves to be protected. That's superficial diversity. Uh, deeper diversity, meaningful diversity, diversity also means uh, protecting different ideas. And, you know, when we Muslims shield ourselves from the challenge of tolerating different points of view, uh, we actually wind up conveying to the world that we are incapable of growing and that our faith is too. I would suggest that Islam deserves better from us. And take something like the Danish cartoons. Does it matter whether they were deliberately offensive or accidentally offensive? I mean, is the effect the same? Well, according to the Qur'an, it doesn't matter whether they were deliberately or accidentally. And the Qur'an actually contains, again, a passage that states that if you believe your religion is being mocked, don't retaliate. Walk away and later engage in dialogue. So it actually calls on us to be nonviolent and indeed to be, you know, better than what we have uh, demonstrated ourselves to be when we were rioting over the Prophet Muhammad cartoons. Right. So and were they were they deliberately offensive or not? And does that make the action of doing them worse or not? 
who knows, Sir David, what was in the minds of, you know, these, uh, these cartoonists. Look, I know the story of how the cartoons came to be, but I also know the story of how the riots began. And what happened was that a group of imams in Denmark tried to create uh, a stir out of, the, uh, out of the cartoons. Danish Muslims were too reasonable to go for it. And so they took these cartoons, fabricated a couple of their own, took them to various authorities in the Middle East, and got them to choreograph major riots over these cartoons. So the same question that you've just asked about the intentions of the cartoonists can also be asked about the intentions of those who, um, you know, who have staged these riots. And this is why I say we've got to engage in self-criticism rather than simply pointing fingers at the rest of the world. And so in terms of free speech, uh, which obviously is important to you and enable you to, to communicate. That's right. Um, is there... Is there anything that you would ban people from saying? Or they say the old thing about shouting fire in a crowded mm -hmm. theater and so sure. on. But would you ban anything or should the world be totally free in that sense? Again, you know, these are, are complex issues and I don't think that there is a black and white answer to, to such a question. But in a showdown between censorship and freedom of conscience, I will always choose freedom of conscience. Why? because I am a Muslim, and here's what I mean. We Muslims believe that only God knows fully the truth of anything. Therefore, while we are here on this earth, we have to uh, embrace the fact that we have very limited knowledge, which means that nobody, nobody, myself included, can claim a monopoly on the truth. And that's why we've got to be able to dissent and disagree and debate, hash things out, because at the end of the day, we don't know the final answer. Only God does. So it is actually an act of faith and an act of humility to, um, you know, create a world in which debate is accepted. Ershad, thank you very much indeed. May God bless. Ershad Manji talking to me earlier. In a moment or two, Henry Kissinger staring into his crystal ball after the break.